Um, uh, Teresa and I were at the Wake Forest Clemson game and Graham came in the box and my daughter in introduced me to him. So I took him over and introduced him to Teresa and he said, fine, if you ever want to come up there, I'll take care of you. He walks away and Teresa says, was that a student? <laughs> I said, I said, no, that was the athletic director. Oh my God. So, <laughs> uh, and with his youthful looks, it, he kind of reminds me of what some of my buddies here today, Clemson buddies, look like um, when after seven years, they finally graduated from Clemson. So. <laughs> um, my son-in-law calls Graham um, already one of the smartest and um, an athletic director that's second to none in the United States already. Very thoughtful, very accurate, very smart athletic director. He also is very proud of Graham who takes great pride in his family his uh, son every week to his father-son breakfast. So we're glad to have you and look forward to your remarks. Thank you. This time I'd like to call Paul Miller up to the front for presentation. Okay, Willie, I don't want you, don't throw the flag on me, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, before I get started, I just want to tell you that um, in 2001, we uh, did a thing to honor Woody Dantzler out at OW, and that was after that, several of us met. It was uh, Buddy Pugh, Coach Jeffries, Kathy Hughes, Don Tribble, and myself, and that's how the Orangeburg Touchdown Club came to be. Um, this year, we are going to recognize an individual for the Don Tribble Jeb Runiger Unsung Hero Award. And I'm gonna ask Kathy Hughes if she would come up and assist me with this. Our previous Recipients, Chuck Nichols, Roxanne Cummins, Joe Van Fossen, and Bill Hamilton. And so without further ado, Ms. Hughes. Yeah. You're on. Well, I thought Paul was going to talk a little bit more about the award, but it is called the Unsung Heroes Award, so you can figure out what that means. It's a behind-the-scenes worker. And instead of describing more about the award or why this person was chosen, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Where's the flag? Can I hold it? Well, good. Don't throw it. Then you can't throw it. A short story. I hired Carla Hall in 1995. And for any of the high school students here, that was way back in the 20th century, long before you were born. So Carla moved here with her husband, Rob, who was going to work for Zeus and her young daughter, Krista. In the initial job interview, I found out that among other experience working, Carla had been a Tupperware trainer. Now again, for the benefit of the younger ones, Tupperware is a plastic food storage product sold primarily through parties, home demonstration parties. Carla trained these women who sold at the parties. I thought that was ideal experience for an advertising sales position. Well, the publisher at that time was Dean Livingston, who I knew did not like anything Tupperware. In their sales model, Tupperware, Tupperware ladies never advertised in the local newspaper. And that was close to a sin to Dean Livingston. So I had to convince Dean that Carla's Tupperware experience was a benefit and she would make a great addition to the T&D family. What a great move. 27 years later, Carla is a key member of the T&D management team and still a beloved member of the T&D family. I asked another employee to describe Carla and she wrote to me, Carla is very organized, multi-talented, dependable, 
gets along with everybody, is willing to learn anything, and is very pleasant to work with. On that note, I would add that in these past 27 years, I have never heard Carla raise her voice or seen her angry. I'm not sure Carla can say the same thing about me. And I would add she is a master of details. Obviously the touchdown club agrees. I ask that she replace me on the touchdown club board and I know the club has benefited from her involvement in the years since. During that time, I'm sure she has been all those things and more, dependable, detailed, organized, multi-talented, extremely pleasant to work with and constantly learns new things like live streaming your meetings. So thank you for the honor of allowing me to present the behind the scenes unsung hero award to my good friend, Carla Hall. And it, it, it's a real award. Yeah, I told you. I am definitely a behind the scenes person and I do not like to see. But um, when Kathy asked me to replace her on the board, of course, I said yes. I mean, you don't tell Kathy no. <laughs> and um, I've enjoyed every minute of being on the board, um, work with some great people, and I'm just happy to help with whatever I can. I love football, and I just love being a part of this and coming to the meetings. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Go. <laughs> if you can. Stand up, stand up. Stand up. Congratulations again, Carl. I'm going to tell you. Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago, we didn't, we couldn't even, not even spell Zoom. We didn't even know what Zoom was. And, and Carla jumped on board, got us in Zoom, and she helps out all the time. She helps with all the uh, stuff we do every week on the screen there. Very good recipient. We're glad so much she does for the board. Appreciate it. All right, I'd like to turn it over to Hall of Fame coach Willie Jeffries. Thank you. I hope, um, I hope my oration will deserve an ovation. Some of you didn't catch that. Uh, uh, Graham, we're so happy to have you today. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Buddy will tell you all about him uh, in a minute. I guess he probably is the youngest athletics director now, not, not athletic. I keep telling him about that. You got it, Graham? Okay. Well, we're so happy to have you. Um, uh, that is that is your pastor, um, Chuck. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Reverend. I'm so happy that we don't use we don't use Baptist preachers anymore. You, you you're Presbyterian. Yeah. Uh, okay, we're gonna go on with the program. One, um, you all have to be careful. We have some English teachers in here, and you all have heard about tenses. T E N S E tense. So the teacher going to use an example. She didn't look too hot either, but she's going to use an example on tenses. I am beautiful. What tense is that little voice at past tense? <laughs> I'm, I'll tell them about the peas next week. Okay, uh, I was up at up at the basketball game the other night, and uh, and the the sports writer had the front seat, 
up, up at the Gamecocks playing the Bulldogs. And uh, it was Travis Bolden. And I hope you wrote a good article because we almost whipped them. It, but lacking the shot, the bird uh, doesn't make any stew, but we still came close. So let's welcome our sports editor for our own Times and Democrat, Travis Bolden. Just finished up the first round of the playoffs. Quick look at the scoreboard. Uh, Buford Academy defeated Orangeburg Prep. Lewisville defeated uh, HKT 51 to eight. Calhoun County uh, 33, Dixie 21. Thomas Hayward 42, Dorchester Academy 13. Buford 52, Orangeburg Wilkinson zero. Holly Hill Academy 74, Lawrence Academy 28. Denmark Oler 40, McCormick eight. Southside Christian 42, Whiteville Hill to nothing. Calhoun Academy, uh, 29, Clarendon Hall, 6. Bamberg Earhart, 42, Latta, 12. And Woodland, 47, Lake Marion, 33. A couple of our top players from uh, last week, Navion Hilliard, uh, no, excuse me, Navion Hilliard of uh, Lake Marion, uh, threw for 405 yards and four touchdowns. Justin Brunson of Calhoun County had 170 yards rushing and a touchdown. Omarion Buckman of uh, Bamberg Earhart rushed for three touchdowns. Andrew Tucker of Calhoun Academy had 178 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Keith and Washington of Denmark Oler, he rushed for four touchdowns and also threw for a touchdown. Luis Fernandez at Archburg Prep had 194 yards rushing, or excuse me, 194 yards passing and two touchdowns and also rushed for another touchdown. And due to some inclement weather, we had a game last night. Holly Hill Academy defeated Richard Wynn Academy 72 to 14. So they'll advance to the Skiza eight-man championship to be played next week. In that game, Tyree James had 269 yards rushing and four touchdowns, and Tyler Wright had five tackles, two interceptions, and two tackles for loss. And now for this week's Players of the Week. First on offense, from Calhoun County, Tykes Davenport. Uh, like I just had 179 yards rushing and two touchdowns, and he also threw for 83 yards and two touchdowns as Calhoun County defeated Dixie to advance to the second round of the Class 1A state playoffs. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, say, we'll talk about it later. You all please stand because you all deserve to have patience. And now for our defensive player of the week from Bamberg Earhart. Eric Lee. On defense, Eric finished with nine tackles and had an interception return for a touchdown in the Red Raiders win 42 to 12 win over Latta in the first round of the Class A playoffs. They'll advance to play Johnsonville on Saturday. Okay, uh, don't, don't cover Miss Mark, cover that sign. 
Again, it's the second round of the playoffs, and, and due to weather, we uh, don't have any games on Friday. Um, like I said, Richard Wynn and Holly Hill Academy played last night with Holly Hill winning 72 to 14. Uh, tonight, Calhoun County goes to Christchurch to play. That's a, I'm sorry. I'm now being told that that game is going to be Saturday at 1. Thanks, Coach. So everybody will play Saturday. Okay, so Calhoun County and Christchurch play Saturday at 1. Uh, Denmark Oler will be at Louisville. That game is Saturday at 2 o'clock. Bamberg Earhart at Johnsonville is at 3 o'clock on Saturday. And Calhoun Academy is at Thomas Hayward, and that game will be Saturday at 7 o'clock. Uh, so good luck to each and every one of those teams, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. We're going to leave that alone. <laughs> we, we beat Bama, and that's all that counts. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. Uh, Travis, if um, the guy got fouled attempting a three-pointer, so he could have tied the game if he made all three, wouldn't he? For Oh, before the shot. That that sounds like a little home cooking now. They had the pots on before we got there. Okay. Okay. Um, what a great, what a great crowd today. And we have to uh coach Pew. Um well, I'm not gonna talk about the game. He'll he'll tell you about the game. We were all there. And uh while Coach Pew is up here, he's gonna introduce our uh, speaker for the day. So Coach Pew, uh, come up and let's welcome our own coach, Coach Oliver Buddy Pew. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I appreciate you not talking about that game. I don't know. I don't know if I want to talk about it either. But now, before I get going here, uh, Tyres, uh, you and uh, Eric, both you guys. Uh, congrats! Is it how, how do you how do you spell that? T Y K? Is that right? Tykees. Okay, Tykees. I'm gonna get it right. Uh, congratulations! You guys must be still playing good because uh, y'all over into the into the big time rounds of the playoffs too. So y'all, congratulations! Y'all keep doing good. I'll be looking forward to seeing. We'll be here next week. I'll be late waiting to see what y'all do next week. Y'all keep getting get, getting after those guys. Um, Christchurch. Is that who y'all play? Go get them, guys. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we played Dell State this past Saturday. Um, we start now to play uh, down into our uh, depth chart a little bit. Uh, we've got a couple guys uh, um, banged around and hurt and that kind of stuff. And we we get a chance to, uh, to play a pretty good Dell State team. And they get out and hit ahead of us, 10-0. Uh, the best part about the whole game for me was the fact that our guys continued to really fight and and, uh, and hang in there to the very end. It was a good football game, I'm sure, for people who, you know, came to be entertained. Uh, it was not a good football game for those of us who, you know, who re really want to see us, who got to see us win. Um, to get back to 24-all at the end of regulation, and uh, and to not be able to finish it off, it's been kind of a theme of our season this year. Uh, we've had a couple of games where we've been right there at the very end and couldn't quite get over the hump. So rather than y'all see me sit, stand up here and cry in front of everybody, um, I'm not going to talk anymore about that game either. So we play Howard this week in Washington, D.C., and Howard is really starting to play well. It'll be a tough game for us, um, and especially with the fact that we are <clears throat> starting to play some of our younger kids. The fact that we don't really feel like we can win the league at this point, we really can, but you know, there's so many ifs and ands in it, and all that kind of stuff. And our quarterback and a couple other guys are out. 
we like to think that we own about the fact, own about the task of uh, developing our team for the 23 year. And uh, we'll play uh, our freshman quarterback, um, uh, Prometheus Franklin from up at Greenville uh, to start this game. We want to see, we want to see how that goes. Uh, we think that he's the heir apparent in the next really big time play at South Carolina State. So we are excited about giving him an opportunity. And, uh, you know, we get some of our other guys, uh, Cyrus Ellison and some of the other names that you hadn't heard, you know, that'll be a big part of our team in the future. So um, pay attention, y'all. Uh, uh, get a little bit of a glimpse of the, the football team for years to come. I think it'll be really fun to watch these kids as they develop and become the kind of players that, that you're used to seeing running around South Carolina State. Um, just to give a little bit of an idea about, about Howard's football team, um, they've got a, a big old good-looking quarterback that's really starting to develop into a big-time player. He's throwing the ball for about 65%, and, uh, you know, he's really starting to, to, to come on. They've got a couple of Orangeburg kids, Orangeburg area kids uh, on that team too, which is, you know, a little bit of a, I think, uh, I guess, a recommendation for South Carolina State and the fact that we've had so many good players from this area, the, the schools in our league are now starting to come in our area and start to recruit some of our kids. And we can't take them all. And it gives this, it gives this area a chance to have some other kids go off and get college educations and get degrees and that kind of stuff pretty much for, you know, the cost of, of, of being a player uh, for free. So um, uh, I'm excited about the fact that we get a chance to see some of those local kids up here as we're going to play Howard uh, this coming Saturday. Now, um, as far as the, uh, the um, uh, season is concerned, um, we'll find a way to make the best out of this little bit that we got left. Our guys, is, our guys are really seeming to, you know, continue to want to work at it. And I tell you what, the one thing I can say is our kids hadn't quit. They really want to continue to play hard. Now, our speaker today is Clemson Athletic Director Graham Neff. Some years ago, he was making small amount of money, really a nice amount of money for, for a young executive coming right out of college that way. And uh, he was one to, he had a special desire to want to try to find a little different kind of career. He wanted to get into athletics. He wanted to actually go back to school and, and, and work on his master's and get involved maybe in athletic administration. Uh, Neff opted to return to, to Georgia Tech, the school that he had graduated for an MBA, which launched him into athletic administration. Following his heart has taken Graham Neff to ADs, to the ADs position at Clemson. And uh, you know, it's one of the elite brands of college athletics in this country. His ascension, his ascension into the top leadership position came after seven years as deputy AD for Dan Radakovich and a stint at Middle Tennessee State with AD Chris Massaro. And it's, it's kind of nostalgic for me because when we were at Carolina some years ago, Dan and Chris were two of the little assistant ADs running around there. We used to beat them up. And make, and make them do stuff. And they'd be, they'd be wanting to beat us up at the same time. But it, those guys were tremendous, uh, you know, understudies to Mike McGee during that time. Uh, all those experiences uh, during the time that, that uh, he was at Clemson, he, one of the big experiences he had, excuse me, was, was as the uh, point guy for the negotiation as an assistant AD for Dabo's contract. He's the guy who actually put Dabo in his position uh, to be a uh, head football coach at Clemson contractually that way. Uh, all those experiences, especially at Clemson, provided him with a chance to win the approval of campus leaders for, for when Dan left to be the AD there. Uh, most notably, Neff had engaged in three separate uh, successful contract negotiations for uh, Coach Sweeney. It was really, uh, I was really fortunate that Dan gave me the opportunity to work for some pretty high level contracts, uh, high level projects, Neff said. To be able to have some, some of those experiences showed alignment <clears throat> with the campus and uh, the, the fact that he was felt to be so important around campus that way. 
uh, his uh, president, Jim Clemens, uh, sat at his breadth of experience at Clemson as the CFO and director of capital projects in his short time as in, the, in the Clemson chair. Uh, Neff already had made a splash in hiring a football coach, uh, excuse me, a baseball coach. He hired the guy from, uh, from Michigan last year. And, uh, you know, it ended up being, a, I think, a, a, a great hire in a way where, you know, we're going to see if this thing is uh, going to work out for him. I think that this, this guy is one of the top coaches in the country. Uh, Neff is, uh, is married. Uh, his wife, he and his wife, Kristen, have three boys, Grady, Emmett, and Nolan. Uh, and according to my daughter-in-law, uh, Tristan is uh, Kristen is really the head doggone operator in that whole outfit. So she's the guy who is actually, you know, his steering influence for this whole deal. And uh, the reason he's been so successful is not because he's such a great guy. It's because she's the guy that's driving this deal. So without any further ado, I bring to you Clemson's AD, Graham Neff. Thank you, thank you, good afternoon. Excuse my raspy voice a little bit. I've been um, getting on the backside of a cold. Um, so if I have to pardon myself for a second, um, please bear with me. Really appreciate being here. Um, coach, for the kind introductions, Bud and Natalie are dear friends, former colleagues, used to work at Clemson, as you probably know, um, and Kristen and Natalie are, are remain really close. And they're in Atlanta, which is where Coach said is, is my uh, where I grew up, I'm a proud Georgia Tech graduate. Um, but couldn't be more proud to serve in this role at Clemson. And this is my 10th fall. Um, so first, first fall in the new role, 10th fall at Clemson, uh, which has been a great, a great, great stretch. Coach Jeffries, I, I too have been at some of the South Carolina Hall of Fame banquets. And so I've seen the flag um, that comes out. So I'll, I have a couple comments. And Larry, I don't know if we're, we're able to pull up the PowerPoint or not. If not, I can talk. If we are, I have, I have a couple pictures to, to flip through. And then really happy just to have a discussion and Q&A with the group um, just for, for the little bit of time here this afternoon. We really have, have circled this. I've been looking forward to coming down um, here to this touchdown club in Orangeburg for quite some time. Didn't, didn't expect or didn't want it to be after a loss for the Tigers. Um, but needless to say, it's been a great fall. And there's certainly a lot, a lot going on in college athletics. And I know there's, uh, there's a lot of Tigers here. My friend Pat Black and the boys. Um, I know there's some Gamecocks and, and there's certainly a lot of Bulldogs. And so I just look forward to giving some updates just from Clemson, uh, but I'll certainly stick to, to a lot of football from a, from a college uh, landscape standpoint, um, let alone just, just things for the Tigers. So a couple pictures, um, Larry, if you're pulling it up, um, certainly it's been an awesome four home games for us thus far. And we, we end with three, uh, three at home um, with Louisville this Saturday and then Miami next Saturday and then uh, Gamecocks at our place. So, it, um, nine games in, but we still have three home games uh, to finish. And so that, that home game environment is always something we're continuing to build and invest in um, new infrastructure this year. So new video board um, that, we, that we installed, it's about four and a half times bigger than what it was in the past and what that's been able to do along with, with new lights, uh, LED lights and new sound system, really been able to impact that game day experience. And so we've had two home games, or I'm sorry, two night games thus far. And games in the Valley and the Rock and the Hill are always special in that entrance. I feel like it's been even more, even more special um, given some of the, the theatrics and the video board and the lights that we've had this year. And so look forward to that. The Louisville game is at 3.30 this Saturday. We'll find out the Miami game um, this weekend, the game time, and then the Gamecocks game uh, time week after that. So I, that continued investment is really important. Um, after this, uh, after the home game with South Carolina in a couple of weeks, really the Monday after Thanksgiving, uh, we're going to start the next phase of construction at Memorial Stadium, really focused um, on, on some of the team areas, uh, coach locker room, game day recruiting area, um, things like that, that are kind of for the team, again, kind of underneath the west side of the stadium. But then also importantly for us from a tailgating standpoint. And so we have, um, we're redoing Tiger Walk in lot five, which is one of our, our prominent um, tailgating um, areas and locations. So we're going to start that the Monday after the, the South Carolina home game, and we'll plan to be complete in August of next year. So ultimately a, a construction project this full off season, it will be ready for, um, for next year. So that continued investment, it, it, it all told between the, the video board and that project this past year, 
and this continued uh, locker room and tailgating um, investment. That's it's a $65 million project that will finish um, this, this upcoming summer, um, all supported by IPTE, inter IPTE donors, certainly ticket holders, um, major gift uh, donations. And so it's big business. It's big business, but we're going to continue to invest in all of our sports, all 21 of our sports, but certainly football being the, the driver for us from a, from a ROI standpoint, let alone just a brand and, and, a, and an ethos of Clemson is really important. So we've already started a, another, uh, another architecture project uh, for the stadium. Um, it's, it's a couple of years away. We're still just kind of doing some designs. We have to obviously get the, the uh, financing and fundraising in place, but really significant investment in our concourses, restrooms, concessions. They need a lot of upgrades and improvement for those of you that have spent time in the Valley. Um, so investment there on, on all four levels, north and south side, lower deck, upper deck, concourses, restrooms, concessions, um, apparel, what that looks like from an in-stadium standpoint. Um, and also pair with that, more premium seating. We have tw between three clubs, we have 2,400 seats, club seats at Memorial Stadium, all sold out. We opened up a new club this year that, sit that seats 650, sold out before the first game. We have 95 suites, all sold out. We have a wait list uh, rather long for suites, for, for club tickets. So, so those type of things which certainly have, have, have uh, revenue associated with them and there's good ROI, but we have that, that level of demand. IPTE's annual fund this year um, will raise $41 million, $41 million this year all, uh, via IPTE. That's about, that's top five in the country. And so these type of things that, you know, how we, and this is ultimately kind of, you know, part of my, I guess, message or, or vision is within the changing landscape of college athletics, of football, sure, but college athletics, NIL, transfer portal, college football playoff, we'll talk on that a little bit, NCAA changes and, and new president for the NCAA, um, all of these changing movement, player voice, student athlete voice, really important and, and has never been more dynamic. And we need to be bold and, and adaptive for that at Clemson and continue to invest, invest in football, invest in, in all of our sports. But we need to do so while keeping Clemson, Clemson, you know, what that means for us and, and, and for our alums and supporters. And so that balance, there's a balance there that, that, I, that I think through. And I think that that helps guide a lot of our decisions of, of where we invest, what the priorities are, um, staff changes. Coach talked about, you know, a change with, with baseball. That wasn't easy. Baseball is really important at Clemson, really important. A lot of strong tradition, Omaha. And th that transition, I think, to, to get to a point where our expectations are to, to compete and, and to get to Omaha. And to support that that legacy, Coach Leggett um, and his his involvement with the program and our recognition of his era, really, really important. Very intentional about those conversations and, and that strategy for those changes that, are, that aren't easy. Um, but but that's you know my job now as a 38 year old. Thank you, Rob. Even though I'm, I'm I know I look younger than that, um, but that's that's a big part of the support and the the positioning of, of Clemson athletics and what that means for for Clemson University. Just really, really important. A couple other things. Um, we are starting uh, off football. Um, we are starting two new sports, two new sports at Clemson, women's lacrosse and gymnastics, women's gymnastics. So lacrosse will start this year. It's a spring sport. So look, we'll have our first Clemson uh, women's lacrosse match and event um, this spring. Full season in NC ACC women's lacrosse. ACC is the strongest women's lacrosse, lacrosse conference in the country. The last four national champions in, in, in for NCAA women's lacrosse, some combination of North Carolina, Boston College, Syracuse, and Virginia, all in the ACC, last four national champions. So, so we're starting in a league that is uh, the penultimate as it relates to competition. So we're going to invest just like we did with softball. Softball in year two won the ACC championship. Year three went to a super regional top 10 team in the country. So that means facility. That means coaching staff and support travel and operations and so we've had great success with softball starting that sport we plan to have that type of similar investment and we have expectations for success um, in lacrosse that will start this year and then gymnastics which is going to start a year from now gymnastics is a winter sport so really uh, December of 23 again about a year year and a half from now is when gymnastics um, will start at Clemson we have half of a roster so we have about seven or eight um, girls at Clemson Clemson students that are that are gymnasts um, that are redshirting this year, and then we'll have a full, uh, a full gymnastics team next year. So two new sports, really important, uh, not, not without expense. And our investment from a facility and capital project standpoint, scholarships that are supported by IPTE, 
Um, and so those type of things require investment and support in, in, in us to profile and, and, and brand it. And it coincides. This is the 50th anniversary. 2022 is the 50th anniversary nationally of Title IX. Title IX federally was started in 1972. And so there's a lot of celebration, I think rightfully so, throughout the country with Title IX. And, and we're certainly um, uh, doing our part and really celebrating Title IX and the women student athletes that we have and women uh, alums that, that we have and, and students and, and supporters. Um, two new sports is really unique. And that's a really special opportunity for us to, particularly two that are as prominent as lacrosse, which is really growing, I think, in our, in our youth systems. And you all probably see it and feel it down here a bit, youth and maybe middle school and high schools. And so we feel like that's a growing, emerging sport, particularly in the South and, and in South Carolina. Um, and then gymnastics, which is just a great environment. Gymnastics would compete at Little John, our basketball arena. Um, and so that'll be a great addition of an event for our community. And there's just a lot of excitement in and around uh, both of those sports here at Clemson. And again, coming off of softball, which was is in year four, year five, um, and the success that, that we've had with softball. So, so all of those other sports um, that, that are uh, just really important as we, as we lead, and, and, and football is certainly will continue to be our main um, investment and driver um, from, a, from a business standpoint and a brand standpoint, but it helps fuel the 20 other sports that we have um, that I ticked off some. Obviously, we tipped off with basketball last night. I, too, was watching the, the Gamecocks and Bulldogs game the other night. I caught it, and I thought, too, it was a foul on, a, on the three-point shot. It was the, the pots were on the stove, right, Coach? Um, but, uh, but we play – but uh, for men's basketball, we play at, uh, at – in Columbia, um, play the Gamecocks tomorrow night. Or for earliest, we've played um, that matchup in quite some time. Usually, it's kind of after the fall semester, mid-December – um, so Coach Brownell and Coach Parrish, uh, Parrish who, are, who are actually good friends from um, their coaching days, they moved it up for various scheduling reasons. So that game's tomorrow night, important game, obviously. Um, so excited to, uh, to get into basketball season, men and women. Um, so a fun time of year. It's an overlap time of year that we talk about where certainly the fall sports, soccers, um, certainly football, volleyball are still competing. And then the winter sports, basketballs, men and women, and a year from now, gymnastics for us will start and, and begin their winter season. So busy time of year, there's overlap time for us administratively. There's another overlap time that we call it really in the February and March timeframe when these winter sports, basketballs, gymnastics will be finishing their season. And obviously the spring sports, golfs, tennises, um, baseball, softball will be starting. So busy time of year for our staff, for us to, to promote and tell stories, um, but really excited to continue to do so on behalf of Clemson. So those are just some of the the, the, the Clemson updates, let me take a half step back and I'll talk a little nationally um, as it relates to some of the things that maybe I see or that we're, we're talking about or tracking um, from just a college, a college football and a, and a college sports standpoint. Uh, college football playoff expansion, right? And so that's been, and a lot of this is, has maybe been written about, um, but the, the expansion from four teams to 12 teams has happened and that's been officially adopted. President Clements um, is an ACC representative. He sits on the the College Football Playoff Board of Managers, I think is what they call it. So he's one of the votes. He's one of the 11 votes as it relates to the decision-making and the change for College Football Playoff. So he was one of the votes to expand it to 12. Um, so it's really uh, impactful that, uh, that Jim is able to be in those rooms and, and certainly affect change. And, and he's there representing not only the ACC, but Clemson, you know, and our brand from a football standpoint and our experience and success with it. Um, he's got a heavy hand, um, I know, in those conversations. So how, how it's been written about or, or where it currently sits is the expansion from four to 12 is going to happen no later than 2026. But my understanding and discussions we've had is that there's a lot of momentum and a lot of work being done on logistics to have the expansion start in 2024, which is going to be here before we know it. So this year, obviously, it's four. Next year is going to be four. Um, but the year after that, 2024, it, it very likely could be expanded to 12. That's not determined yet. There's a lot of logistics that go into that. Expanding to 12, how the bracket would look is that the top four seeds would get a buy. So you buy through. And then seeds five to eight would host on campus seeds nine to 12. So a really new and unique opportunity from a, from a playoff standpoint to host a playoff game on campus. So if we have a, have, a, have a solid year and we're the, the five seed, we're going to host the 11 seed in the Valley in mid-December. 
And so what that looks like from a benefit for IPTA members, for season ticket holders, and it's going to be a home game. You know, it's going to, it's going to be, we'll give 5,000 tickets or so to the visiting team. So it's not going to be neutral. It's not going to be split. It's going to be a, a Tigers home game at, at our place. What that means for again, season ticket holders, IPTA, our community, local business, the state, really, really great opportunity. So the details of the bracket are still being um, ironed out. Uh, as it relates to the, the timing. And again, there's no later than 26 um, working on the logistics to, to have that earlier as early as 24. But you can appreciate some of the logistics and difficulty that come with that. Um, ho hotels. So now you're gonna have a visiting team. You know, we schedule out so far in advance um, in, in, in our operations. Our, we've already booked our hotels for, for next season games, our, our away games. But this is gonna be um, the opportunity to, to make the bracket, be in the cultural playoff at 12, and then you play 10, 10 days later, later at Clemson, you know, or Clemson's going to wherever. And so all the logistics that come with moving a football team that has 135 on roster, coaching staffs that we have, support staff, um, certainly, you know, um, university support and, and how we would don't uh, fundraise and, and, and have folks travel with. That's it's a big moving of a Titanic. It's not a motorboat. That's a, that's a big old boat. And so how you plan for hotels, hotels in Clemson aren't easy. Most visiting teams um, that come and, and play us stay at the Marriott up in Greenville. Um, so how, you know, how can we hold hold hotel rooms like that? Or not certainly you get into food you get into to tickets and, and, and band has a band traveling so th that type of quick turnaround is not easy so those are some of the logistics that are being worked on as it relates to hey when can we go to 12 is it in 24 which again there's there's momentum and i think there's um there's desire to have that go to uh, to start in 24 i think that's probably likely if i'm being um, real candid but no later than 26 so that's so that's coming one additional thing as it relates to playoff expansion that's going to be important is when the season starts. So right now <clears throat> for, for college football, by and large, week one is Labor Day weekend, right? Open up Labor Day weekend this year. We play Georgia Tech on Labor Day night. Um, and then you finish with the rivalry weekend, Clemson, South Carolina game, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And then conference championships are the first weekend in December, you know, the, week, the four, first full week after Thanksgiving. <clears throat> There's work being done and discussion about moving moving the, the season, moving the calendar, so to speak, up one week. So now you would get what that would effectively mean is first week is going to be probably the uh, week one, game one is going to be the last weekend in, in August, really the week before Labor Day. And now follow me, right? The, the rivalry weekend is going to be the Saturday, it could be the Saturday before Thanksgiving instead of the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And so I've learned a lot about the rivalry here, Gamecocks and, and Tigers, that it hasn't always been that Saturday, right? A lot of times it used to be where that, that game was the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So that might move just from a full calendar standpoint. And now you would have conference championships, ACC championship, SEC championship, which I know you guys have a lot of bowls um, and, and, and games at the end of the season. Those, might, those would move up, to, move up a week to the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And, and why that's being explored, why we're looking at it, is to give basically add another week into the month of December because if we're expanding the playoff and and having a first round game on a campus and having quarterfinal get you're adding two rounds of a, of the playoff now that gives a little bit more breathing room in December to host <laughs> to host these games and to host the playoff expansion in December is not an easy time certainly holidays but if you think about it from a from an academic standpoint a campus standpoint we have commencement winter commencement um, we at finals week. You know, you have, you know, um, th those type of academic um, events that are really important and those are academically focused. And so now if we're trying to add in uh, a, a playoff game, a really important game, whether we're on the road and we're traveling somewhere or we're hosting a game in the Valley and we have 80,000 people coming to campus and it's finals week, not easy, not easy. And so, so th those are two aspects that are connected as it relates to when does the season start? Does it move up a week? Um, that way that's being done in consideration for the playoff expansion, but they're two separate things. The playoffs is going to expand. That's already been, been voted on just kind of, it comes to a matter of when, and then now we're kind of looking at the calendar of, Hey, when, if, and when can we move the calendar up a week? They're not going to happen together. They're, kind, they're two separate things, but they obviously, you know, work, work in concert, so to speak. So those are, those are a couple national, um, football related aspects with the playoff expansion. Um, and certainly with the calendar, Timing um, for us, listen, um, and, and I'll pause after this for any other discussion or questions for wherever we want to take it. Um, 
the ACC and how we're positioning ourselves in, in, in the moving landscape as it relates to conferences and, and, and what that looks like for Clemson, um, right? And I know the Big Ten and the SEC right now are very focused on incorporating their, um, their, their two new schools, respectively, Southern Cal and UCLA to the Big Ten and, and Oklahoma and Texas to the SEC. Um, and so they're focused there and they're looking at scheduling options, et cetera. And, you know, it's, it's part of my job to make sure we're continuing to, to position and be very connected um, throughout the landscape. And we'll always do what's in the best interest of Clemson. We're incredibly pl proud members and founding members of the ACC. Know our brand is incredibly strong nationally and in particular in the ACC. And so we're having a lot of financial discussions within the ACC, football scheduling discussions. Um, and I know even though I'm, I'm a young guy coach and I look even younger and I'm a new guy to the room, um, but I represent Clemson and, and what our brand and our position is within the league. Um, so that balance is something I, I think about a lot and try to be very intentional about being aggressive for, for Clemson and, and on behalf of us and positioning us within the ACC, um, but being a, a incredibly um, you know, respectful and thoughtful as it relates to the landscape and, and opportunities. And so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of work as it relates to the ACC and our conference and, and the financials and football scheduling. This is the last year of divisions for the ACC. Right now, we, we've, we've already clinched the Atlantic division. Um, so we're going to, um, to Charlotte for the ACC championship. Next year, there's no divisions. It's just the top two. That's going to be new. Um, Coach Sweeney loves divisions. Uh, he talked about well, this the, last year we can you know, win, the, win the division championship. Next year, it's just going to be the top two, go to the, go to the conference championship. So, so a lot of change, a lot of change. We're going to continue to position Clemson. That's my job to, to navigate, to be really connected as it relates to the industry. Um, and, and push and, and recognize what our brand and the success that, that Coach Sweeney and football has built to, to help position us um, to have a, have a really loud voice at the table um, as it relates to just this changing environment for college athletics. So with that, I'll, I'll pause there. I know there's certainly some things I didn't touch on. I'm happy to go uh, wherever, whatever direction or whatever may be on your mind. Kristen tells me that I, I talk fast from time to time. So I hope, hope you're able to keep up or follow along with a couple of those those notes as I was breezing through them, uh, but happy to go uh, wherever, whatever else might be on your mind or whatever else I can help, help uh, talk about. Yes, sir. Yeah, the question was uh, it was it was basically, hey, the, the financial positioning, are, are we concerned that the ACC would fall behind with finances? Um, yeah, yeah, there's concern, um, you know, and, and as it relates to to investment and, and, and where we, we certainly compete in the ACC and compete for an ACC championship. But right, we schedule such that we, we schedule a national schedule, we schedule home and homes and we we. Um, certainly Notre Dame um, is scheduled out through the ACC, but, but the, the, the Georgia games, the Texas A&M games, we're scheduled out with LSU. And the company, you know, that's our, you know, our brand is national. Um, so how we continue to have resources to, to support that is, is of concern. Here, here's what I would say, though, and, and this is a little bit more specifics as it relates to the ACC work that's going on. Right now, the ACC, um, every, and this is most all conferences are like this. Every school in the league gets the same slice of the pie. So this year from the ACC, our distribution is going to be about $38 million, just like Wake Forest, just like Florida State's, just like Pittsburgh's, all the same slice of the pie, by and large. And so, um, so there is discussion within the league, and we're on, there's some committees that, hey, do the slice, are the slices of the pie different based on not just Clemson's is bigger because it's Clemson. I like that idea, though. But based on, on success and performance and our brand and our TV value, um, certainly the success we've had with the, with football and, and the CFP. So, uh, you know, and ba basketball is a big part. We haven't been a, 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 you know, a huge contributor from a March madness um, standpoint, but others in the league have. So, so is there, are there ways to um, come up with, with call it a formula or just a different methodology to distribute the dollars in the ACC. And now that allows schools, maybe like Clemson that can, are, we're, we're heavily invested in football that drives a lot of the brand for the ACC and for Clemson. And does that allow our slice of the pie to be bigger? Um, is that gonna solve the issue, sir, for, for the gap that, that is at? No, um, but is it help to, to change and to help offset some of the, 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 the financial gap that a couple of these other conferences will have compared to, to the ACC probably? Graham, I have a yes, sir, coach. 
if you uh, people selling uh, memorabilia that you have a patent on, and I think we we have it too. What does the vendor have to pay in order to, to sell the 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 memorabilia from friends on the South Carolina state? Yeah, so uh, you know, I think you can get into apparel and T-shirts is one thing, and I know there's there's probably other products or memorabilia. You know, generally to 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 have a, um, a an apparel or memorabilia, um, there's there's royalties to Clemson. So Rob's wearing a, a a polo with a paw on it. You probably bought that for fifty dollars. Maybe a little more, maybe less than that from back in the day. A lot more than that. Great. We, generally, we get our our royalty for a, a product, a T-shirt, a nice polo, or or another piece of memorabilia. If it has the paw on it. Our royalty is is anywhere from ten to twenty percent, just to give a, an order of magnitude. And so, Rob, if you had bought that T-shirt for fifty dollars, our royalty probably would have been for for apparel like that twenty percent. So, our department we would we would have got ten bucks, you know. And then obviously the seller, the retailer is going to take their share. You chop it up. Um, but there is a process, coach, to um, to get approval for using the paw, whether that's on a T-shirt or another another piece of memorabilia. And again, we have a a, a small slice of a royalty of it. Um, but but we love having different type of products, memorabilia, shirts or otherwise. That's really important for our brand um, throughout the state, upstate, let alone how that's grown throughout the country. What else? Yes, sir. Jeff. Great question. Um, the, the question was, if, if the SEC expands to nine, what does that mean for the, the rivalry game? Um, I, I do think it's, in, in my conversations, I know the SEC is, is certainly studying going from eight to nine league games. Um, and you know, where are they land with that? That's, that's their league decision. I, I can't imagine um, a circumstance where our rivalry game, the Clemson South Carolina game, goes away. There, there, there's four. Um, so the answer is no. I, I could not imagine, uh, you know, where that rivalry game goes away despite uh, maybe the SEC go into more league games. There's four. There's four rivalry games between ACC and SEC schools. Obviously, Clemson, South Carolina, Georgia, Georgia Tech, which is where I grew up in Atlanta, as as uh, Coach had said, and so that was the rivalry I grew up um, appreciating. The uh, Louisville and Kentucky, and then uh, Florida, Florida State. So those four schools that are four games rivalries, um, you know, have implications um, for any expanded game. So I think if if there's expansion to nine SEC games. All four of those SEC schools would have to consider those rivalry games. I know for our state and Coach Tanner, who's a who's a dear friend, and we talk um, quite often. Uh, we haven't discussed that, and I can't imagine that would that would be at risk. Yes, sir. <laughs> um question was hey how about the sec um yeah that, there's been a lot uh, don't believe everything you, you read by and large um as i was saying earlier and i'll be uh, i'll be even more direct um you know again it's my job to to have all kinds of conversations and and president clements and our board to make sure that we're very well aware of changing in the landscape what other conferences are, are looking to do or not how we're positioning ourselves within the acc so um, yeah, we've had, we've had, we have conversations all the time, have, you know, dating back to the summer, predating the summer. Um, at, at this point, we're, we're focused on the ACC. Um, and as I talked on some of the, the financial opportunities there, football scheduling, building our brand, um, winning the competitively, winning the ACC again, football's, you know, a lot of the driver of this. Um, so, you know, no further, no, there's no updates uh, for any other landscape change. Don't, don't envision anything imminently um, of having any more dominoes. Um, you've seen some of the television contracts coming out for the Big Ten, for the Big 12 just announced theirs or, uh, you know, that it, it got out that they're they're close to their um, television contract uh, final. So um, we're going to we're going to continue to I'm going to continue to position and, and, and uh, look out and do what's best for Clemson on behalf of uh, President Clements and our board. Um, but but, you know, at this point, we're focused a lot on internally on ACC right now. Any out one more? We have time for one more. Is that we we in a good spot? Yes, sir. Wrap it up. Do 
Yeah, the question was why Notre Dame, ACC, um, whereas obviously all of their Olympic sports are, are um, ACC members, and then we, we play five games a year against Notre Dame. ACC would love to have Notre Dame, and it's, it's, it's uh, probably a, an open invitation, I would, I would imagine, in some informal way. Um, I, I know, and just having been up at South Bend this past weekend, obviously for our game, that, um, gosh, that, it's just a different and special place, and I know that how they value their independence um, it, it really, we, we kind of know that, like it or not, um, we read about it, but even when you're there, it, it kind of really hits you how it's just a really different place. They, they have, they have no sponsorships within the stadium. There's no, Pat, you were there, you, you saw, um, there, there's no signage on the state, uh, you know, on the signs or the walls, the video board, they're doing all their, their videos and highlights. They're not sponsored by, so they're just, they just, they operate very differently. Um, and so, you know, at this point, I, you know, I don't know that there's any, significant expectations that Notre Dame would join the ACC. Um, but I know we're proud to have that association and to, to play them. They're coming to the Valley next year. So obviously we've been up there in 2020 during COVID, COVID year, obviously last week, six days, five days ago. Um, and they come to us next November, um, which will be a huge game at our place. Last time they were at our place, some of you were there within the, the a little weather like this, the hurricane game in 2015. Um, so the association is really strong and important. Does that change their membership? Uh, not sure. Probably don't have don't have high expectations of that. Um, but listen, I you know again coming off of it, I'll, I'll maybe close with these um, huge game this Saturday. Um, obviously, it was a tough one up in South Bend, and there's a lot of commentary on that that's that you all have talked about, and, and I've certainly read some. Um, and I'm I'm not gonna I don't have the whistle around my neck. I'm not gonna go into any of the details or the the, the schemes. That's not my job. Um, but I do know that this Saturday is a really important one for a lot of obvious reasons. Um, and I think we're going to show well for our game, 3.30 in the Valley. Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be really, really incredible. And I, and I just get excited for um, to play better um, to kind of to quote coach. Um, but then for these three home games to end, particularly the rivalry game at our place and then going to Charlotte for the ACC championship game. So we got four left, three at our place. You know, Charlotte feels like our place a lot of times. Um, and so I think it's going to be an awesome stretch and an awesome uh, last month here for the Tigers of the regular season, getting into postseason, and then how that looks for CFP. And obviously, I talked on future CFP and expansion. You know, there's there's a lot of discussions going on there, um, but I couldn't be more more appreciative and excited for for the role I'm in and, and the first fall for this um, to interface with you all and just hear and share some of the notes from from the Upstate. Um, hopefully, you hear some energy, some excitement, some some you know maybe different different lens of thinking. Again, I know I'm a I'm a young guy. The gray hairs are coming in uh, quicker and quicker. Um, but really appreciate you having me, Coach and Coach and Rob, um, and just being here and, and sharing. And um, hopefully you guys have a great weekend. And high school guys, good luck this weekend with a lot of those notes and updates, Travis. Um, hope to see a lot of you uh, in the Valley this Saturday and, and going forward. So go Tigers. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Graham. Good job. You know, um, uh, you got uh, Pat Black and David Coleman. They pay the most money up at Clemson. Uh, you can check with them. Um, but anyway, uh, Graham, uh, Graham started out, he, he wasn't in athletics. He, he was selling brooms. He, he was buying his brooms for 50 cents a piece and selling them two for a dollar. So he bought a bigger truck. But anyway, some of y'all didn't figure out. Let's, let's bring our president up. President of the Orangeburg Touchdown Club, Mr. Rob Hibbs. He deserves a round of applause. Thank you, Coach. Graham, it's uh, very obvious to all of us that Clemson picked the right man to promote to athletics director. So looking forward to great things from you and, and keeping the tradition for the students and the alumni going. You have a great product up there. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you for coming. Best of luck. Uh, the rest of his day, he's flying back from Orangeburg to Anderson. His wife's going to join him, and then he's flying to Atlanta tonight. And that's a typical day for an athletic director. So we appreciate you taking the time to come visit us today. Um, our speaker next week is um, Rick Henry from the uh, News WIS TV in Columbia. That'll be our last meeting next week. And Tychus and, and uh, Eric, congratulations on your award. Best of luck to you the rest of the season, and great to have the parents here who make them who they are today, and the coaches also. Thanks very much. All right, this time we'll have the uh, Piggly Wiggly drawn. It's a $1,000 gift certificate. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Earl Humes. Oh, man. Earl. Earl, Earl, you need to stay up here. Um, the Pick'em Contest was the worst we've ever had. Uh, only two people missed four games out of 10. <laughs> so that's terrible. It was Earl Humes and uh, Cedric Simpson. And Earl, you came in second. So you did not win the Pick'em Contest. I'm sorry. Yeah, almost. Thanks for coming today, everybody. Appreciate you coming out. And I hope you have a great college weekend this weekend. And we'll see you next Thursday, last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, my man.